Butch Hamek here. We have a commission. My friend Steven's daughter, Brittany, is getting married on Saturday. And her pug, Pomona, I think that's his name, uh, is going to be a flower boy, ring bearer, something like that. Anyway, he needs a bow tie. And so, luckily, they sent me pictures of uh, this lovely pug's dimensions. He's got about a five inch square head. So I'm gonna design a bow tie that's gonna be four inches across, a little bit narrower than the head width, just to be a little bit proportioned for the pug. At this point, I have designed the bow tie, and what we're gonna do is we're going to have, this is the outline of the bow tie. This is four inches by one and a half inches. Is that right? Yeah, four by one and a half, um, with a little bit of a dip in the center, which will be tied even tighter. Um, we're going to, we need a, a length around the neck. So this is where the neck length will start of eight and a quarter because the pug's neck is 16 and a half inches. However, um, so that would be here, like around here. However, I'm leaving extra for overlap for the Velcro to attach it. At this point, I've got the finished pattern, although I am debating if I should make this, the string around the neck or the band around the neck a little narrower since it also makes up the, the cincher at the center of the bow tie. I think it might be a little too wide, but I'll solve that dilemma. I wanted to tell you a little thing about this fabric. So this is what looks to be bridesmaid dress fabric, which is not my usual fabric for um, making a bow tie. It's very drapey, which is different than the structure of the um, cotton that I usually work in. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use this medium heavyweight fusible interfacing. Fusible means that you can just iron it on and it stiffens up the fabric. And the other thing I'm going to do is I'm going to separate these two layers. So there's a layer of this fabric and a layer of this fabric. I'm going to cut them separately just to make sure I get good even edges and there's not like a lot of vagueness around the cutting line. So that's what's next. Ready. Right now I have pinned to the fabric, well to the interfacing, the pattern. And because I am very confident in my sewing, I have folded this to be four thick. That's a little advanced. I would say if you're new to sewing, don't put a pattern on more than two layers of fabric just because it can easily sort of get out of hand. But let's see if my confidence is well founded. As you can see, I managed to successfully cut four pieces of each of the fabric. So the inner fabric, the overlay, and the fusible interfacing. So now what I need to do is I'm going to connect these two pieces, the underlay with the fusible interfacing. This is the wrong side. This is the right side. It's slightly lighter on the wrong side. So I'm gonna uh, fuse to the wrong side. So here's the little knobby bits of the fusible interfacing. You put that face down on the wrong side, press that. So I'm gonna do that for all four pieces and then I'm gonna start assembling, sewing, and we're almost done. So we've got the fusible interfacing face down on the wrong side of the fabric. And I'm just gonna lightly press. And since these are synthetics, I'm, I'm using a low setting on my iron. I forgot to mention, if you're using synthetics, make sure you're using a low setting on your iron because it will kind of melt it, which will ruin both the fabric and your iron. So. Always, as you're ironing, if you keep moving it, that'll also help to make sure nothing melts. Yay for synthetics! So I've successfully attached the interfacing to the under fabric, and now I'm going to start assembling the two sides of the bow tie. So the bow tie is going to come in two pieces, um, so this two of these will make up one piece. Um, and then what we're going to do is have a little bit of Velcro to attach it around the back of the neck. So. What we need to do is layer these pieces. So this is the, the overlay fabric. This is the right side of the overlay. So we put the wrong side of the overlay on top of the right side of the under fabric. So this is how it should hopefully end up. We're gonna put the right side of the overlay over the right side of the overlay. <laughs> this is quite a sandwich. Then we're gonna put the right side of the last piece to hit the wrong side of the overlay. So that's the sandwich we're making. We're gonna sew around to here, leaving this side open for hand sewing, and then turn it inside out, hand sew, and then we should be close to finish. 
I've managed to pin and assemble these fabric sandwiches. This is six layers. And what I also did is I punched out little holes for each of these sort of joints in the pattern. So these are points where I'll be stopping the machine, adjusting it slightly to make crisp lines. Um, and then also some of these are where I'm going to stop and leave the open edge. So from here to here is an open edge. We're ready to sew. We're gonna start over here, go all the way around, go around this edge and stop here. We'll have an open uh, side, which usually I hand sew, but I think for these, I might actually just do a top stitching. So we'll see how it goes. The two sides of the bow tie are now sewn. So now what I have to do is trim and what we'll do is we've got six layers to get through. We're going to notch at the corners, the corners that go in, and we're going to do this on the external corners, and then we're going to trim down to maybe half of that. So a quarter, an eighth to a quarter of an inch, because all of this is just going to make it harder to turn it inside out. We've trimmed the bow tie sides, and now we're to the difficult part, which is turning it inside out. Now, I think I made a large enough opening, but cross your fingers, because it may be a bit of a slog getting this fabric right side out. And again, it's six layers more. Why did you make it six layers? <laughs> now, one of the ways I have, one of the tricks I have at my disposal is this letter opener. I use the back side, which is very blunt, to see if I can't push it along. I think with this delicate fabric, I need to actually just do it the slow way, shoving it up with my fingers and then prying it out. At this point, um, as you can see, we are close. We're very close. Um, I'm going to, for the second, uh, the second half of the bow tie, show you that because it's such a flimsy fabric, instead of just folding under a half inch on either side and making a sandwich like we have here, I have to actually do a little prep work, which is folding it over a half inch on one side, sewing a top stitch um, to keep it all together, and then connecting it all. I sewed the top stitching and uh, I like tacked them together with a pin so I could actually tie it around my neck as though I am the pug. Problem is, as I anticipated, this fabric, this is six layers of fabric on each side. It's way too thick to tie like a regular bow tie. So instead, I'm going to actually cut this side off and just do a little teeny like uh, strip here to tack it and then finish the, the go round. So it's gonna be a little different design than I originally planned, but I think it'll still work. So my workaround looks like it's gonna work. Uh, right now what we're doing is threading a needle so we can do a little hand sewing. And the hand sewing is gonna be connecting the little loop around the bow um, to the thing that goes around the neck. I am sewing on some snaps as the most efficient way to connect this um, strap around the neck with very little overlap space. So I'm going just um, down through the fabric and then through there are four little holes in each of the snaps, on each side of the snap. And I'm just going around it twice to try to make it super strong. I don't want my bow tie to be the thing that flubs the wedding. Ta-da! Do you want to go? Do I want to go where? To drop it off. Oh yeah! I see. Let's go drop it off. You can make me one. <laughs>